Well, I think you, you, you attend to it by saying that our concept of nationhood has got to be multi-faith. In other words, the concept of a, of a state that is simply for one faith um, means that in the end you are excluding people of a, of a different faith and that you have to argue that, that such a, that's, that a nation that is, that is exclusively the preserve of one faith is, is, runs contrary to the principles of reconciliation. Um, now, they may disagree with that, okay, of course, but I think that's the argument you've got to use. So, for example, in the context of the Middle East, where many Israelis would talk about a state for the Jewish people, this is, in my view, has meaning if it, if it's in the same way that you would say that, let's say, Indonesia is a predominantly Muslim country and will be a Muslim, and you might describe it as a Muslim country. Right. But if what it was was a statement that you had to be Jewish in order to live in Israel, obviously that would be wrong. Right. And so in a negotiation, one of the things you've got to do sometimes in, a, in, in political negotiation is put down um, the red lines. You know, in other words, there's a point at which it's not worth having the negotiation if the negotiation is to end up with something that is contrary to, 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 to basic principles. And here again, it's important that religious people are there arguing that even though we may be predominantly of one religion within this state, we cannot, and it is wrong, and contrary to our religion, to exclude those of a different religion from living here. And I think you know, I reached this point in the Northern Ireland negotiation on occasions when I would say if that's the price of the, of, of the deal, it's too high a price to pay. <laughs> um, partly because it's wrong and partly because, of course, it's always unsustainable. Now, you have a, actually a similar situation, which is in Kosovo today, <laughs> which, <laughs> where, you know, I find myself in quite an unusual situation when I went back there just a few months back. And, you know, because on one level, people there will know me as someone who helped, as it were, liberate Kosovo. Um, and they were rather surprised when I went back there and said, the first thing I want to raise with you is the position of some of the Serb Christians who feel now excluded and driven out. Because that's not, I, I didn't do it for that reason. I didn't do it because you were Muslim, right? <laughs> or because you, I did it because I thought it was wrong that ethnic cleansing should happen. And I would think it if it was Christians ethnic cleansing Muslims or Muslims ethnic cleansing Christians. But if your concept of the state does not allow for religious difference, then it's a concept that I wouldn't personally want to support. So, you know, we got into quite an interesting debate about that. But it's a very important set, you know, at some point you've got to lay down these red lines on this. Otherwise, you actually end up, you see, then you end up actually sanctioning religious as a badge of identity, religion as a badge of identity in opposition to someone, rather than um, an empowering set of values that guide people, but where people can find different paths to, to salvation.